What is good, everybody, man? I'm hoping you guys are all having a great Friday night. I figured it'd be the perfect night to go live, man. I know of, I know a few of the other YouTubers are out of town. I know a lot of things have been going on this week that I haven't been able to address on the show, man. We've dropped some great interviews, man. Make sure to go check out our interview with Jordan Hill from Harvard, linebacker, NFL prospect, and today, Nigel Hill from Delaware, man, hopped on the show and offered a lot of insight what's going on up there with the Delaware football program great interviews and next week let's just say we got some fam you interviews dropping we got another montana state guy won't drop the names just yet but just know we got some big interviews on the way coming on the channel but you know before i start man you know we got the two big storylines of course we got art brow speaking on the grambling situation for the first time in public and we also have the the debate that's been raging on all week as the news broke that the SWAC has apparently offered Tennessee State an opportunity to join the SWAC again. And we're going to break down, you know, why or why not they should go to the SWAC. And if not, what should they do? Should they stay with the OVC? Is there another conference that fits them really well? We're going to break all that down. And of course, we'll be taking y'all's live calls and comments all night long, man. Got nothing to do. So as long as y'all want to go, we're going to be rolling, man. Shout out to my guy, Blues the man. <laughs> What's up, Alan, man? Thank y'all for tuning in. But but first off, I really wanted to say, if you if you have not been watching the NFL Combine and you're an FCS football fan, you have been doing yourself a very big disservice, man. FCS players have been putting on an absolute show at the F at the NFL Combine, man. At, I mean, just it, it's it has been amazing to watch from Cole Kelly to to the kid from Brown just airing it out all all night long to Deshaun Dixon from from uh, Nickel State and then finally, man, my guy Christian Watson. I told y'all he was a player to watch last live stream. The dude at six four two ten gets clocked at a at, at like a four three six official, and was at like a four two eight unofficial forty. Was the top broad jumper in the class, and I believe on the athleticism scale that the NFL uses to grade players, he was a ninety eight out of a hundred. He was higher than Calvin Johnson when Calvin Johnson was in the combine, who set the record a while back. Christian Watson has been putting on an absolute performance at the NFL Combine. And tonight, the big uglies are out there, man, the offensive linemen. And Trevor Penning has been putting on a show a 4 9 for like a 6 8, 320 pounder. He runs a sub five second 40. He's in like the 4 8, 4 9 range at that size. And he has been really looking fluid out there in the hip drills and the footwork drills and just moving at that size. And then on top of that, Cole Strange, offensive lineman from the FCS too, he has been putting on a giant show as well. I believe he set, I, I believe he was second in the bench press with like 30 something reps. Um, so I just wanted to take the time real quickly on this live stream and to shout out all those guys for putting on for the FCS. And that it's not done. Marquise Bell's going with the DBs later this weekend. And there's a bunch of other great players that are, haven't even got a chance to step on the field from the FCS at the NFL combine. But this year, from the NFL PA game with Marquise Bell, Akil Glass, and um, Cole Kelly, Deshaun Dixon, and all those guys, all the way up until now at the NFL Combine with these same guys showing out. I think this offseason we got a really good look at the real talent that we have at the FCS level, and I think that should really be highlighted and really spoken about across all these channels um, out here who is covering any sort of FCS football. Man, what's good, Ralph? Appreciate you tuning in. Um, let's see, BB, you're all over the place with the coverage. Love it. TSU should definitely join the SWAC. We're going to get to that in a second. Tennessee State, this is your last chance. TSU should join the SWAC coming from an alum. Not at all. Alum want to come to the SWAC. It's a split. Ooh. We're going to get to that. But first, Art Bryles speaks finally on the Grambling um, offensive coordinator situation that went down just last week. And he did an interview with Jason Whitlock on his platform. Um, I'm not going to speak on Jason Whitlock. I've seen a lot of different things on, you know, people, you know, really questioning why that was the platform he went on. I'm not really going to touch on that, but I want to touch on some things that Art Bryles really spoke about. One concerning that he said that one, he would still take the job back. So um, for me, I don't see how Grambling offers him the job again. Like, 
if you go through with hiring him one and you weren't ready for the backlash and you already took all the backlash from firing him from pissing off both sides like we covered earlier this week, what is the backlash and what is the narrative going to be if you offer another chance to him? And I think it's going to put a real bad look on Grambling if that was the case. And it, he kind of made it seem like the door wasn't all the way closed. So I really, really need Grambling to come up with a statement. I mentioned it on my live stream when they decided to part ways that I really felt like Art Browse didn't do this on his own. And he really spoke on that in this interview where he said – he, he, he came out and said that he by himself would not step down, that he really swallowed, you know, all his pride. He took the bullet for Hugh Jackson and Grambling and just said he was resigning to, you know, keep the spotlight off the program and all that stuff he put into his statement. But for me, I want to know what happened behind the scenes. Was it a alumni thing where they finally came together and there was too much backlash to the ad and hugh jackson not know what they were getting into were they not ready for what was coming down the line when they announced that they were going to hire art browse i need to know what was the final straw and the the biggest thing for me is now you have him out here putting out his side of the story the only side of the story we haven't heard we've heard doug williams side we've heard art browse we've heard the media's perspective where is Grambling and Hugh Jackson's perspective? Because I, I know there's this big thing, and I know there's a few other people who will probably agree with this. You always want to control your own narrative. You don't want your narrative in the hands of other people. And right now, that's what Grambling has kind of put themselves in a situation for. They're not controlling this narrative. Everybody else in the media, everybody else involved in the situation is controlling their narrative. And it's really, in, in my opinion, uh, I personally think that this is not a great look for Grambling, that they're just letting everybody um, just kind of go around and, and say what they want about it. And we still haven't heard anything about what happened behind the scenes, what Grambling's AD has to say about it, what Hugh Jackson has to say about it. Because right up until he stepped away, they were defending it. So I need to know what what the mindset is in the locker room now because now you've started spring practice. And so now you don't have an offensive coordinator. I, I I can't see the reasoning behind why you would force him out if you didn't have a replacement on deck, potentially. Uh, is Hugh going to call the offense? I don't see that potentially happening. You're still going to have to have someone take on the role as offensive coordinator. You're still going to have to hire somebody, even if he's a placeholder and Hugh ultimately runs the offense. I need to see some forward some forward steps here from Grambling, in my opinion. You've got too much expectations. You landed a recruiting class with like 30-something kids. A lot of them are very, very talented. What are you going to do to be competitive in the SWAT? Because right now, it's it's really looking bleak for me, and this situation has really got out of hand for Grambling. I really don't feel like they were prepared for this in the slightest. And on top of that, another big comment from Art that really, I feel like, it didn't really take it didn't really take me aback, but it was more his thinking, like what it makes it look like is that he really, really he said he said this was announced to the campus. This was announced to the team. This was announced to the people in the know. And nobody had a problem with it. And then my thing is, is if Doug Williams had as much power as it looks like he does now. Where was Doug Williams? How in the world was this guy interviewed, vetted, and on campus for two weeks? And supposedly your most important alum, the guy that you're going to lean on for decision making, didn't even know that he was on campus because he didn't make a statement until it was announced to the media. So one of two things happened. Y'all just completely forgot about Doug Williams or didn't really care what his opinion was until he spoke out in the media or two he saw the media backlash and then says something. So something something didn't sit right with me about that is that he was on campus for two weeks. Players were working with him. Other coaches were working with him. Students were seeing him on campus. And Doug Williams did not know about it. I just have a really hard time believing that was the case, that if he's so involved in, in, in everything like in, – in everything – that he means to that university. There's no way a guy was on campus as the OC, the the – I guess the stature of what Art Browse is, and he didn't know for two weeks. There's you cannot convince me that's the case. So I have a lot of questions about that, guys. And that's my biggest takeaway from the interview. It was it, it it was a yeah. You know, I don't really like Jason Whitlock. I'm going to be honest with y'all, but 
it, go watch the interview and and see what you have to say for yourself. But the fact that he was on campus for two weeks and nobody said anything, I, I don't know. Because if Doug Williams didn't see him or was asked, there had to be another alum that knew, right? Like, there, there's, there's a few of y'all in here watching right now. Not one alum saw him. Not one alum saw him on campus. Not one alum saw him in the football building. Not one player accidentally leaked it. Like one coach leaked it or media member. Nobody, nobody knew. Nobody knew. I mean, it to me, this is just getting messier and messier. And it, I really don't like how it looks for Grambling in the long run. Um, but man, y'all let me know how y'all feel about it. Let me catch up on some of these comments. But for me, those were my biggest takeaways um, on, on this interview. Let's see, it would be horrible. I'd be surprised if he gets a coaching job again. It's too much that comes with brows. I think he said in the interview, Ralph, they're going to go back to Italy, their football league. So we'll see. Art was there two weeks before Grambling announced his hiring. Why did they lie? Say it was a rumor and it wasn't true. I don't know. I don't know. Said too late now. That is their loss. Let's see. Oh, we got a call here. Hang on. Caller, you're live. Uh, one second, let me turn my back now down. Hey, this oh, is Quincy from Texas. Uh, yeah, so here's my thing on, on the situation. Now, the situations happened within around 2013, 2014 uh, time. Okay, he was uh, terminated for mishandling the information, well, mishandling cases. This guy, oh, so basically what, he, uh, what it was is he got fired for not snitching. And you know, I find it funny that usually uh, people in the black community, we uphold a lot of like your, your little Kims, your Martha Stewart's, these guys for not uh, for uh, for not snitching and going two years for, uh, for uh, these guys got got prison time for two years. And don't get me wrong. I feel for the victims in the in these situations. But what they what everyone is saying in the situation is that. Art Browse, when these situations happen, these guys should have been removed from the team immediately. And uh, there was one player who was found innocent of this uh, of the uh, of the alleged sexual assault. But uh, and he should he shouldn't even been able to play his uh, his senior year. But uh, and with that being said, uh, we are prosecuting this guy for more than seven years of a crime which he did not it's not even a crime it's basically uh him failure to report and which there was over 300 incidents at uh, baylor and so i'm just want to know like I, how long does this guy has to go through the uh, the court of public opinion and and so he, he also uh had to uh he coached at high school at Mount Vernon, Texas. Now, for those who don't know what Mount Vernon is, Mount Vernon is a two-way school in Texas, which is by my hometown. You don't want to go there. Nobody wants to go to Mount Vernon. This guy uh, spent two years there at a two-way school, which is the lowest uh, 11-man football. They do have uh, 11-man 1A football, but uh, that's, uh, that was the only place that would approve, the school board could approve to get this man on board. And so, I just honestly I feel for him because, I mean, the guy was exonerated. Well, I would say exonerated, but it was he was there was no crime committed on his part, and it's been uh, it's been 2013 since these incidents happened, and this guy's going to have to go to the rest of his life not coaching because of that situation, and I think uh, the way Gramlin is handling the situation is horrible. Either you take ownership of them and um, basically have them on the staff or, you know, you, you shouldn't even uh, put them there in the first place because you couldn't handle the backlash. That's my thoughts on the blue. Oh, man. I, no, I, I I appreciate your thoughts, man. Thanks for calling in. All right, no problem. Take care, big dog. But, um, man, I agree with that because, I mean, my thing is, and I, it kind of echo, it, it kind of echoes his sentiment there, is – if you knew you were going to hire him, you had to know about the backlash. Like there's no way you hired him not knowing what you were going to get from the, from the mainstream media and people and, and people who felt a certain way about what happened. So, I mean, uh, you had, you had to have known, I mean, 
personally, and I agree with Marcus here, Doug, I, the, part of me really does think Doug knew about it. And once he saw the backlash, that's when he spoke out. And we'll see. We'll see. And I also do like what, uh, what, what, what this comment right here, that maybe the Louisiana board was not going to approve it and they kind of cut ties early. But if, if it was something that simple, I don't understand why they just won't come out with a statement and say it. But we'll 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 see on that that side. They lied and said there wasn't and turned around and said he was. They should have been honest from the start. I agree. If uh, Doug Williams has that much influence and Grambling's program is trash and will stay trash. Uh, now you see why I don't believe that Coach Art Bryles, uh didn't know about his players' behavior. Um, Doug is just upset and couldn't get his way. Not one player, one coach say, hey, coach, we got some scary guys on this team. I think that does matter. He was cleared. Um, we'll get to that in a second, man. We'll get to that in a second. NDSU will have multiple players drafted in the other rounds. I agree on that. I agree. Uh, let's see. Based on the interview, it sounded like at least two NFL teams passed on Browns, Chargers, and Browns. Yeah, it looks like he was at least was at least there to, I guess, see their interest. So I'll I'll have to see on that, man. But I wanted to kind of update y'all on what Browns said, my thoughts on it. But really and truly, one, this was not Art Browns' decision to step down. Two, this looks real bad on Grambling because he's been on campus. And like one of the comments said, he said he's been working with these players for, for like over a month. So I I don't know. I don't know how – I don't know how no I don't know how Doug Williams didn't know. That's just my opinion. And then on, on top of that, this is just poor handling by Grambling on all fronts. The the every single I mean, I don't know if I really don't know if you could have handled it any worse if you're Grambling, other than I, I really don't. I don't even know how you make it any worse than it was. Hugh tried to hire art on the Cleveland Browns, and that didn't that did not work the first time. I agree. Um, it's sad that people try to win with a high price um, to pay. Now the school is in a sticky situation. I think the board wasn't going to pass Browse. I agree. I don't think the board was going to um, approve them, but that's your out. If and like the way I'm thinking about it is, why are you taking all this heat if you're grambling? Just come out and say the board wasn't going to approve it, and now it, it's all good. Like we we understand the board wasn't going to approve it. It was out of your hands. But Grambling is just set, like that's that goes back to what I just said. Grambling is letting other people control the narrative and it's going to hurt them in the long run. If you have a chance to control your narrative, control the narrative. Don't let other people tell your story for you. Tell your own story. And Grambling is just still sitting on their hands doing nothing, doing nothing to restore any image, to clear their name on anything. They're just sitting and letting the media run right over them. So I, I don't like the approach that they took. And then, man, our our other topic here, and, you know, I'll take it a step further. Let me go back up to this comment here. Um, Tennessee State gets an offer from the SWAC to join. And I, I've been kind of sitting back because I really wanted to get the temperature of the room before I spoke on this because I know um, – I know a bunch of other channels did this. I know a bunch of other media covered this. I just want to just kind of see where everyone was and kind of the 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 narrative around it. And what I what I gathered is there's a few there's some that don't think they should make the move, that there's other options. Um, there's there's a few that think it really doesn't matter. There's a lot that think that if Tennessee State joins doesn't join the SWAC, let them go. That they're they're gonna be annoyed. And there's a lot of people who think they should join. It's kind of you know, it, it, it's kind of all split around, but uh, let's see. I would take the last subject a step further. Who would the SWAC add with Tennessee State, Kennesaw, the Atlanta market? I can see them both going a, a, a sun or to the SOCON. So I'm going to give – so before we get to who they're going to bring with them, my opinion on them joining is the, – the first thing I need to know is, one – who are they going to bring with them? Because I don't, I don't think if both teams make sense, the move's not going to work. Because what you're going to have in the SWAT, because what, because what you're already having a problem with is the comp, the division rotation. Because Jackson State and Southern rotate off of, off of each other's schedules, Alcorn, Jackson State rotate off of each other's schedules. Like there's too many classics that have to be kept up now. If Tennessee State goes to the other division, Jackson State has three classics in the other division that when they, those teams aren't on their schedule, they're going to have to schedule those as non-conference games. Um, and so for me, the number one thing I ask about adding people to the conference is what value does it add? 
And for me, this doesn't add a lot of value outside of outside of an HBCU joining an HBCU conference. That that's the headline. I don't think I don't think that's the and I don't think and if that's like the major selling point, I don't think that's a good move for either either the SWAC or or Tennessee State. And I understand there's a lot of people who say, oh, the attendance, oh, um, it like you're sitting in the OVC and nothing's happening there. And my take on it is Tennessee State should leave the OVC. The OVC has lost a lot of talent, and there's too many good conferences that Tennessee State can join that are going to add more value to their program in terms of competition, in terms of you know, eyes in terms of exposure, in terms of attendance, I think there's better options for Tennessee State outside of the OVC. Now, I know there's a lot of Tennessee programs in the OVC, maybe some of the SOCON, but for me, if I'm Tennessee State, I'm sitting here looking at the landscape and the MEAC's out of the question. I'm at, like, I, I'm, I'm being honest with y'all. You cannot pay me to go to the MEAC if, if I'm North Carolina and T, if, if I'm a D2 school, if I'm Tennessee State. The MEAC is too low right now to, to like, I like that's a conference that is like have lost their top, what, two or three programs over the past few years. And that they're just, they're getting picked apart right now in terms of conference realignment. Uh, that's why I would say leave the OVC. When I'm looking for a new conference, I want somebody who has embraced, who has embraced this realignment and made something of it. So I'm looking at the ASUN potentially. That's where I think Tennessee State should look first is the ASUN. If there's an offer at the ASUN, I think they should take that. The ASUN is a new conference. It offers some stability. It's got a good, fresh set of teams. And I, and in my opinion, I think that would be the best location for them to go because we've already seen what the WAC is able to do. The ASUN and WAC came along together, had a scheduling alliance last year. The WAC is going to be loaded. And right now, you look at the ASUN, they lose Jacksonville State to FBS. But they add Kennesaw State this year to the mix, so automatically that's a great trade off because Kennesaw State is going to bring a lot, a, a lot of talent to the field to the ASUN. You still got Austin P in there, which I think that you're already you were just in a conference with them. That's one of the reasons the OVC is falling apart. In my opinion, I think a fresh new conference for Tennessee State would be the best deal. And in the SWAC, I think they're going to get lost in the shuffle. I'm going to be honest with you. I think they're going to get lost in the shuffle in the SWAC. And based off of Tennessee State alum that I have talked to, their ultimate goal for Tennessee State is to follow the North Carolina A&T um, the North Carolina A&T path and get to the playoffs and eventually go to FBS. And so for me, if that's what you want to do, coming to the SWAC doesn't get you any closer to your goal. It's the same reason I said North Carolina A&T should not go back to the MEAC and should not join the SWAC. The North Carolina A&T made the best decision for their long-term goal. And so for Tennessee State, I think if their long-term goal is to go FBS and go to the playoffs, you've got to go ASUN because the SWAC does not offer you the does not offer you that opportunity right this second. And I think the SWAC is a close second, though. I think if you don't get into the ASUN, I think joining the SWAC is better than staying in the OVC for right now because I don't know what the future of the OVC is going to be because there's not a clear path for that conference. I want vision. I want to see what this conference is doing to stay ahead of the fray. And right now, I don't think the OVC is um, doing that was whatsoever. And so the only the only way the OVC is going to save themselves is to call up the Southland and try to find a way to conjoin those. Um, I, I, I personally believe that's the best bet for the OVC is to just like hopefully combine with Southland, steal some teams. They got the scheduling alliance with um, the, the Big South, but the A-Sun, I think, it, is a thing. Yes, Coach Simmons, the A-Sun is still around um, it, this year. It is. The only, the only team they lost, Coach Simmons, was Jacksonville State. Um, let's see. Let me get to y'all's comments. And listen, y'all can call in. Give me y'all's take on this. I would love to hear from some Tennessee State people, um, honestly. Honestly, uh, let's see. Tennessee State needs, brings nothing to the SWAC. The SWAC needs to venture out and take some chances on some non-traditional schools. But I will admit I do miss the ATL Classic. No. Uh, man, Kennesaw State would wreck shop, especially that triple option. Tennessee State doesn't bring value to the SWAC outside the marching band, to be honest. 
I like Tennessee State joining the East. Jackson State moving to the SWAC West helps uh, JSU maintain natural nat- uh, natural traditional rivals. I like that because if you move them to the if you move Jackson State to the other division, you know you got you're going to have fam you know fam you right now. I mean, you can still play the OBC if you want, but I mean, really and truly, that Southern and Alcorn game has to be played. So I think moving them to the division really would help Jackson State kind of open up their schedule for more possibilities. A lot of people really don't know Doug is supportive of the program, as you think. Did a lot of shady stuff. I think ten, if Tennessee State did join the track, I think some smaller SWAT schools should go to Division Two and bring South South Carolina State in with them. Great move if you uh, want to not play in November and top out at one bowl game for the conference. A Center CAA would be a smart move. Now that's interesting. Um, I would I would be interested to see because, but geographically I don't think it makes sense. But could you convince them to go to the CAA with with North Carolina A and T and be like, listen, we're gonna have it like you know like go to the CAA and, and kind of I just don't know if they're gonna be competitive, man. Now that I'm thinking about it. I think Tennessee State um, has a lot, long way to go, man, before they compete with the CAA. I think the A Sun is about on par with where that program is right now. The CAA, man, they would, they would get. I, I would find it really hard for them to compete right away in the CAA. But that that is a that is a possibility. It was really no difference in Bethune. They really bring no value. The only reason Bethune tagged along is because they they had to go with FAMU. Like FAMU and Bethune have to be in the same conference. Like there's there, there's no like that's it like that's like the bottom line it's like fam you has to be with bethune period and there, there's nothing after that how is tennessee state going to eventually get to fbs with their attendance that bad that's the other question man I, i'm not sure even the Miac might die might, might die off tennessee state should go there you see i want i want go to the Miac in my opinion nashville adds a major media market for the swag add leverage dollars from media I assume it's made that MEAC video, Nashville. <laughs> Man, if, this, if not the SWAC, Tennessee State could go independent or ASON, maybe SOCON. Maybe SOCON. Um, there's some there's some good teams in the SOCON. I just don't know how much. Mm, I, I don't mind the SOCON, Aaron. That, that's, that's a pretty good suggestion on that one. Um, Tennessee State Band doesn't bring anything to the SWAC. That's true. We got another call. Let's see. Caller, you're live. Hey, so it's Quincy again. So here's from Texas. The answer to your question is: What adds value to to the conference uh, if Tennessee State was to come uh, within the SWAC? I think the first uh, place uh, that people are looking at is Clark Atlanta. Clark Atlanta is a, a Carnegie R2 research institution. They uh, they do have uh, they're in the Atlanta metropolitan area, and uh, the SWAC has been flirting with a Atlanta metropolitan uh, area prior to with um, with uh, I'm sorry uh, I think Morehouse not Morehouse but uh, the uh, there was a university that that did go un, uh, defunded uh, that went down uh, Morris Brown I'm sorry mm-hmm. so yeah Morris Brown but unfortunately that fell under uh, when uh, the scandal as uh, far as misappropriation of funds. Uh, came up and they never tried to get back into the Atlanta area again. But as uh, far as having uh, added value, if uh, if they're wanting to to get their attendance up uh, to get more, I, I say a more viable conference that's on the uprise, uh, you know, it would have to be the SWAC. Now, as far as the ASUN or the uh, the South, uh, I'm sorry, Southland. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, those those ones are on the uh, on the downfall. Fortunately, with the uh, when they left the Texas, when the Texas Four now five uh, left uh, the uh, the the Southland, it kind of left a hole that they've been uh, filling filling. And many of the the uh, the the teams that left the Southland were on that same trajectory of wanting to go FBS, and that's the reason why the WAC was able to uh, court these teams away from the Southland uh, because uh, the the WAC charter, uh, which is in the Constitution of Bylaws. So uh, that's, that's, uh, I think uh, uh, Clark Atlanta and uh, Tennessee, uh, Tennessee State would be a great great fit for the SWAC. Do, do, do you know anything? Because you know I'm like a football guy, so I, I don't really know you know the 
the background or the like the economic background of some of these programs um like what is the enrollment for clark atlanta do they ha do they have enough money do they have a stadium that can that can hold what it would be playing in the SWAC and like you know like how so for you kind of grade them on how ready they are to actually make the jump if it was like a realistic thing okay so realistically they would have to it would be a, a 10 year uh it would be a 10 year jump right now their facilities they have they play in the they play in the old uh, olympic stadium uh that was that's in atlantic atlanta that was used for the 1996 uh, olympics uh the 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 enrollment it was it is in the four thousand mark, and but they would have to get that up uh, significantly to get the fund the unit funds uh, up to do a, uh, and they would have and they would actually have to get more funding on their sports. Uh, so, uh, it the metropolitan which it can be done because of the metropolitan area, and but it would have to be a complete all in. Uh, alumni and uh, the the athletic director as well as the president would have to get on board on moving in that direction. Okay, yeah, man, that's that's a that's a tough jump though. That's, yeah. that's gonna be a that's gonna be a big jump. I mean, you know, and I know some people you know mentioned Kennesaw and things like that, but I mean, if you're looking to keep it HBCU, I mean, that really looks like, I mean, it really looks like your only option to kind of tap into that Atlanta area. Yeah, so that is true. Uh, people, there was uh, rumblings of to ski, but they're not ready, and the, they're they're more than fifty miles away from a uh, uh, airport. For so that'll be extremely has well, it'll be extremely hard for the travel uh, for other institutions that are not within that area. And there there has been talk, well, there's always been talks of uh, what to call it HBCU Super Conference, mm -hmm. but uh, if it's you, only way you're going to do that because you said you hinted this early was because of the protected uh, games and the classics. Uh, you would have to do a pause system, uh, which yep. uh, the WAC attempted to do uh, in the in the 90s, but eventually it kind of blew up because a lot of uh, a lot of the teams had, had their own different. Uh, uh, well, one travel was uh, was still a thing, and two, uh, a lot of uh, there was a lot of money being shared. Uh, so, but yeah, that's, that's kind of my opinion on that. Oh man. Hey, appreciate your call, man. Thank you. All right. No problem. Take care. Uh, four Oh four Oh four call back in, man. I, my weight room thing is apparently still not fixed. So four Oh four call back in. I, I, I got you. Kennesaw state would be the perfect fit for the second team to come with Tennessee state or hang on four Oh four. We got another call. Caller, you're live. What's up, man? Hey, I'm calling about this thing, man. With Tennessee State, um, I really saw two two conferences he might go to, mm -hmm. and they, they're a little bit off of the wall, man, because their attendance and their football is not really that great. I mean, dead honest. What about Pioneer? Mm. Uh, I mean. I think I think you know in terms of attendance and football, it'd be because I mean I think they could probably win the Pioneer. Uh, the problem would yeah. be pro problem would probably be the travel, man, to get up to some of those to, 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 to get up to some of those northeast schools, man. How much is that going to cost you? Because there's there's some schools that you're going to have to take a plane to. Um, True, and, and that, well, that at northeast. Close by. I mean, they have close by like, like Davidson and yeah. um, Butler and Moorhead. So I mean, they have some schools in the area. That that would be interesting, man. Um, I, I honestly would wouldn't have thought they would consider the pioneer, but I mean, uh, like 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 you said, man, I th I think they could probably win the pioneer if they join the pioneer next year because I think they'd probably them and Davidson would probably be the two that I would really like. But um, that 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 would be a um, that that would be that'd be an interesting move. What's your second one, man? Oh, straight up SoCon because of what I heard um on uh, the spaces with. Jay Gaither talking about how SOCOM was trying to get SC State. It'll be a natural fit to get SC State and to get Tennessee State to SOCOM. Oh, that you can complete the entire North South Division just like that. 
Oh man, I I like that man. I you know the SOCOM for me would be interesting because you know historically the reason I didn't include them is because they've really been um they've really been like hesitant to make moves. Um, if, if like you've paid attention like to like these past few years, they they haven't lost anybody really, but they also haven't added anybody. So I just I wonder if they're kind of complacent, but I I don't think they could pass up adding both Tennessee State and South Carolina State. That would be a huge grab for the SOCON in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, especially if you look at, like, just the region, man. I mean, you already have Chattanooga, you already have Elon, but it would just solidify your hold in that region. And honestly, it may kill the MEAC by taking the SC State. Oh, but, yeah. if, if SC State leaves, the MEAC's done. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Yeah, I, but that was my take on it, man, because, I mean, honestly, no one's talking about the Pioneer because. It's a conference you can go from being a middle of tier conference of player in the um, OVC to being basically a dominant team in the Pioneer League <laughs> and get your automatic above to the damn uh, playoffs. Oh, man. Yeah, no, I didn't think about that, Coach, man. Hey, I appreciate the call, Coach, man. Thank you for the insight. No problem, my man. You have a good night. You too. Yeah, definitely hit the like button. Definitely hit the like button. Uh, what that means, Tennessee State have to cut uh, its football scholarships. Can't do that. Definitely can't cut the scholarships. Albany State is in Georgia. They have 7,000 students. They may, they may be a better uh, fit to join the SWAC with TSU. Let's see another call here. What's up, caller? You're live. Albany State is in Georgia. Man, it's your boy, Coach Green, man. What's up, Coach Green? Coach, my boy, Blue, doing it big, man. Hi, <laughs> man. Trying, trying, man. <laughs> Hey, you, you and my boy Scripper going back and forth, man, with the interviews, man. Y'all be trying to knock each other out, man. Y'all, it's like y'all having a contest with each other. Hey, it, it's it's always friendly competition with him, man. Hey, I, you know, I feel like I got the upper hand right now, but I know he's going to fire back and interview like the AD <laughs> of like the SWAC or something like that. So I got to stay ready. Hey, by you saying that, he probably heard you. So he he's going in his book right now since he heard you. <laughs> oh, he's writing down the ideas as we speak, man. So what you got, Coach Green? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, this guy that was talking about, you know, Tennessee. He said Tennessee State to the Pioneer. Yeah, that was Coach Simmons. Man, that would hurt Tennessee. That would hurt Tennessee State. But the simple fact is, you know, like I know, the real, you know, the really good players ain't gonna want to be there as non scholarship. Facts. So I don't even know why, you know, that should have been in the in the conversation. Pioneers should be out the out the conversation. The SoCon, yeah. A son, yeah, because how many teams A son have left? Uh, I, well, so they just started last year, and they had four last year. They're up to six this year. Okay, so oh, so it didn't hurt them when they lost Jacksonville. No, because if you remember last year, the only reason it looked like they had more is because they pretty much were combined with the WAC. Okay. Last year they had okay. the scheduling a lot because um last year technically like Sam Houston and all them all like it was all like a um. It was all like a, some big scheduling alliance. So, th you know, technically they lost a good a good bit of teams, but I got it right here. Next year, they're going to have Austin P, Central Arkansas, Eastern Kentucky, Kennesaw, and North Alabama. Mm. That's not bad. No, I mean, that's, that's, that's a, solid comf a solid comfort. Solid People sleep on Eastern Kentucky, man. They were in like the top 15 in attendance and – that 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 team can be good if that team gets rolling, man. They could be dangerous. But I mean, adding Kennesaw, I mean, you pretty much replace Jacksonville State at you know immediately. Yeah, yeah. Oh, speaking of Kennesaw, that I gotta correct you on something. I, when you when you heard me talking about them, when I was saying they'll be top five, mm -hmm. I wasn't saying they're gonna be the fifth best team. Okay, I would never say that. Okay, I, was, I wasn't <laughs> saying that. <laughs> I was like Coach nah, Green, Coach they, Green. They, they, they are, they're they, not fifth. <laughs> Nah, nah, they ain't fifth. I watched them play. They not fifth now. Nah. They not fifth. But I put them. I put them like in that top two, three area. Mm -hmm. That's where they'll be at top two or three. I, I, my, I mean, I mean, I think they, they pretty good. I mean, I think looking at it, I mean, listen, they'd be my pick to win the swag right now, uh, like for sure. But I mean, I think you know they want. They wouldn't blow out a Jackson State or a FAMU or someone like that, but I do think that they would still get the win in in that game right now, man. Because I mean, when when you haven't faced a triple option, man, that first year, man, I don't think defensive coordinators in the SWAC would know would have a single clue what to do with that kid um at quarterback. 
This this is the only reason I will pick Jackson State over there because when I watched the North Carolina State game, their defense was you know North Carolina North Carolina A and T was 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 very disparate defensively. It was just their offense couldn't get going. Jack State actually got a quarterback, but it all depends on what they O line do, like you always talk about. You know, the O line always suspect. But if Shadur have time, I think he he get some points on the board and they could probably win by a touchdown. That's how I look at it. I can see that, man. I, I think the the biggest difference, man, is that O line for them, man. I don't know, like I, yeah. I don't I don't know how many left this year off the top of my head, but last year, man, they had some. When when you say big uglies, man, they they got they had some boys on that offensive line, man. I mean, when you when you go into the FCS playoffs, averaging almost three hundred yards per game on the ground, man, that is just that's different. Yeah, and that's why you got to be disciplined in that triple option, man, because everybody got a, got a responsibility. Because if you're not disciplined, they'll eat you alive. Mm. Uh, man, I'm telling you, but yeah, man. Hey, I, pr- I appreciate your uh, your clarification on that, man. And your insight, Coach Green, man. Thank you. Oh, no problem, man. Keep up the good work, though, man. For sure, for sure. I see. Uh, stay in the FCS. Go SWAC. SWAC gets returned the auto bid. Timona, man. I you know. I don't. I think the SWAC has to request it, Timona. I don't know if the SWAC wants the auto bid because what what is the auto bid going to look like? Are you going to send your second best team to the Celebration Bowl? And and the reason the the reason that the SWAC auto bid might not is not going to work right now, Timona, is because of that Bayou Classic. Because the Bayou Classic is the first is is that Thanksgiving weekend. There's nothing you could do with the auto bid because the season doesn't end in time. What's up, caller? You're live. Hey, Blue, I just wanted to um, make a comment about the Art Brown situation. Mm-hmm. So, have you, have you had a chance to read the uh, NCAA report or the NCAA findings? Yeah, I read, um, like, I, with all the text messages and everything like that. That and what the NCAA said. Yeah, so, so they, yeah, they pretty I mean, much... A uh, lot of people, a lot... A lot go ahead. Oh, go no, ahead. go ahead, man, go ahead. You're good. Yeah, a lot of people have been saying, like, um, Art Browse was exonerated. But if you read that, the findings of the NCAA, Art Browse was anything but exonerated. Like, they, they, um, hold on, let me see what they said. They said, uh, the NCAA report stated, an incurious attitude toward potential criminal conduct by his student athletes that was deeply troubling. And he failed to meet even the most basic expectations of how a person should react to the kind of conduct at issue in this case. So if you read that statement, that doesn't sound like an exoneration to me. That sounds, that, that sounds like, well, I mean, technically they didn't exonerate him. I think people are using exonerate the wrong way. Um, you know, they're, yeah, they're using exonerate. They're using exonerate because that's what the lawyer said. Yeah, so they're running I, with that. Hey, a good but, a, a good lawyer a, a good lawyer can get you a long way in those situations. But like more, what it was is that the incident belay uh, also had a large play in it. Is that they didn't have a rule against it, and there's a lot of places that didn't have a law against reporting sexual assault in that situation. So it was more that he wasn't exonerated. It was more like there, like it it technically wasn't a rule at that time, so we can't charge you with anything. Exactly. Right. 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 But yeah, that's um that's one comment I really want to make, man. You know, like I said, I really don't, I didn't have a problem with Grambling making that hire. The only thing I would say is if you're gonna make that hire, then you got to stand on it. Like you can't be waffling. Well, we getting back last, so now we gonna force him to resign. Like, if you gonna make that decision and stand on it, then you know prove why you made the right decision. So exactly. they made itself look bad, you know, going back and forth. But like I said, at the same time, you know. I don't know. Like I, to me, somebody should have fell on the sword because, like, to go through all that and then at the end of the day to say, "Well, yeah, we're just gonna let them go." Like, you know, you made you made yourself look doubly bad. So. Right. Oh man. Hey, yeah, I, I, I've been saying the I, same yeah, thing, man. That's I've been, what I want to say. I've been saying the same thing, man. Hey, thanks for calling in, man. Let's see. Yeah, and like David said, the Bayou Classic is not going anywhere. <laughs> Nowhere. Uh, yeah, they're not changing the date. Uh, I, neither side is changing the date. Tennessee State uh, capacity is 15K with, upcom- with upcoming ex- expansion. Winning increases attendance. TSU had good attendance when, when together we were winning the OVC in the late 90s. That is true. What's up, caller? You're live. Hey, this is Mr. Ford. How you doing? Oh, how you doing, Mr. Ford? 
Okay, let me just throw out a couple of things. First of all, to your caller that said uh, that Clark Atlanta could be a part of uh, the SWAC, that's a bunch of bullshit. I'm a graduate of Clark. <laughs> Clark plays one game a year. We, the only game we get up for is homecoming. I doubt if we get two 2,000 or we might not get 1,000 people. It's ridiculous that they would even be having Clark's name in, in the SWAC. Let me say this about Tennessee State. Tennessee State had done nothing right since the 19th, since uh, Big John Merritt died. And I just, it, the best thing for them is to go to the SWAC. Their second option is probably to go independent. But for them, you talking about for them to join the ASUN and for them to join the so, uh, Southern Conference, all that's bullshit. That's just like going into OVC again. Their alumni have told you over and over as a cultural part of it. They don't want to play these people in the Southern Conference. They want to go back and play Southern, who they've been playing since the 1930s and the 1940s. They want to go back and play Grambling when, when it was Big John Merritt against Eddie Robinson. They would love to go back and start by playing Alabama State. And to me, their president and their AD, they can't know nothing about sports or football or anything by the mere fact that they don't have Florida and them on their schedule. That, that uh, rivalry goes back 70 or 80 years. And so I'm going to just tell you right now, don't be surprised if, uh, if uh, Tennessee State does the wrong thing. They've been out of their minds since the 80s. And uh, like I said, the best thing for them is either to go to the SWAC or to go independent. This whole thing about Tennessee State going to the A Sun, that don't make no sense. For them to go to the Southern Conference, that don't make no sense. Uh, they, they, they don't even know their tradition, don't even know their history. Okay? So y'all can go on and talk about Tennessee State. I'm going to tell you right now, I've been told you for years, they're irrelevant because the people who run in the school don't know a damn thing about the school and so, its history. So, Listen, so, have a good night. Oh, oh no. Uh -huh. hang, on, hang, on, hang on, Mr. Four. I got a question for you. So okay. if, if they add okay. Tennessee State, so let's say the SWAC adds Tennessee State, who, in your opinion, and, and like, because, I mean, you hear Clark Atlanta, you hear all these D2 schools, who do you want to see the SWAC add with them to make it a, to make, to make a 14-team conference? Okay, like I just told you, these AU Center schools don't give a damn about no football. You should, when you're talking about SWAC and FCH, you, 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 it's ludicrous and it's really a mental illness to be mentioning Clark Atlanta and Morehouse. Them schools <laughs> don't give a damn about no football. The schools that you could look at, are not a lot of your people over in this chat keep talking about Auburn. Auburn State is getting ready to go to the Gulf South. They want to go and compete against uh, Valhausa State and Mississippi College, and West that's Florida, what they want. That's, yeah, that's, yeah that, that's what they want to do. They don't want to go to no SWAC. Um, I don't. The only thing about Tuskegee is they won't spend no money. They got the money to spend. They would be a good. I mean, it would be a good thing if we could get Tuskegee in the SWAC, but Tuskegee don't want to be in the SWAC because they don't want to spend no money. Um, you you said earlier that. Um, if if South Carolina State lose, leaves the MEAC, that it's a wrap. But I would I would like to see South Carolina State come into the SWAC. I, I, that's the school that I would like to see come with uh, Tennessee State would be uh, South Carolina State. But I don't want to see uh, – I, I heard you saying about how this, the MEAC is going down and all that. I don't want to see the MEAC go down. Yeah. I don't want to see the MEAC go down. And so – uh, if 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 it means them going out because South Carolina State leaves, then I would like for South Carolina State to stay. But the school that I would like to see go in with uh, uh, Tennessee State would probably be South Carolina State. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, listen, I, I don't want the MEAC to to you know go down, but no, man, I don't losing, even. losing South Carolina State would be like when you look at the losses over the past few years from FAMU to. A and T to now South Carolina State, then you lose Bethune Cookman. I mean, if South Carolina State made the move, because I mean they have offers that they've said that the SoCons yeah. offered them, the CAA's offered them to come with A and T. What does the MEAC do to keep themselves alive in that situation? Because you've already mentioned the D two teams aren't ready. I mean, in that case, that no. they have to reach out to somebody for help. Where do you think they turn? Yeah, now, now, now this is what the, the MEAC has to has to go after Bowie State. The MEAC has to go after Virginia State. And it's logistically, I don't see it working, but 
if if the MEAC could maybe invite Kentucky State, but you know the the mileage in between it doesn't it doesn't match. But uh, I would like for them to go after Bowie, and I would like for them to go after Virginia State. Those are the schools I like to see the MEAC go after. Oh, I like that man. The the, the Bowie oh, and, the- and uh, I'll tell you who else: uh, Winston Salem. Winston okay. Salem. I like to see him go after Winston Salem. I, I like yeah. that. I, someone someone mentioned uh, Langston coming back to the SWAC. No, Langston's not ready. That's Division Two territory. Okay. Uh-uh, no. Yeah, that's Division Two. Oh man, that was uh, back in the forties and fifties. The SWAC outgrew people like Langston. Okay. That, that, see, that see, makes... see, remember now when the, when the SWAC started, it was schools like Wiley College, Langston. The, the the school that was original SWAC is like Prairie View. But those schools, you know, they, they stayed down and the SWAC got bigger. Now, Langston is Division Two or NAIA, what they are. Yeah, because I, I see some comments in here mentioned in Miles and Talladega College. Uh-uh. Miles, is, Miles is Division Two. Yeah. So. That's a Division Two school. That guy Ruffin really had them overachieving. Um, I'm, I'm, um, like I said, if, 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 uh, if Tuskegee would build a new stadium with lights, they would be an ideal addition to the SWAC, but they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. They're not going to spend the money. They need a new stadium with lights. And if they would would make a commitment like that, yeah, I'd like to see them come to the SWAC, but they're not going to do it. Because I know them. My sister's a graduate of uh, Tuskegee. I know how those people think. Hey, Mr. Ford, I cannot thank you enough Mm -hmm. for your insight. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Have a good night here. You too. The one and only Mr. Ford, man. I'm, I'm telling you, the only, like he he knows football. He knows everything about everything, man. That, that dude, I love when he calls in. Let's see. Let me act. It's a basketball conference. They got some good basketball, Lawrence. Let me let me say let me say that. Uh, Bowie State is perfect where they are. They're one of the best programs in Maryland. So Skeeky more focused on R three than R two. They don't have lights at the stadium. He said, "Tell I think it does have football." Uh, what about the HBCU in Ohio? They got a good football team. I'm not sure about the HBCU in Ohio waves. Um, I, I personally, I, I don't know which HBCU you're talking about up there. Don't do like the MEAC in the early 2000s and trying to add Winston Salem State only to help them improve their facilities and they return to D2. Oh, Central State. Okay, then that that'd be a mean. That would be that'd be a lot of traveling though. I don't know. It depends. Um. I think now what you're seeing with conferences is travel really isn't a thing. A lot of these conferences may stretch across the country and like, you know, in certain areas. So I don't know how much travel is going to play a part in who they add, but I, I see, I see coach green. Who do you think Morgan state should get to be head coach? Uh, coach green. I'm not sure. Um, for me, I know I've heard a lot of rumors that a lot of people want them to get a celebrity coach and have mentioned like Ray Lewis and everything like that. I just don't see that happening right now. Um, but I'm not even sure if they've interviewed anyone, man. It's so hard to kind of get a feel on who these schools are looking at at this level because there's no insiders or no things like that. And I have no connections at Morgan State, Coach Green. So I, I'm not sure on that one. Has anyone ever seen Mr. Ford in person? I'm not sure. I know Scotty might have, but I, I have not. Talladega just broke foundation to bring football back to the university in 2024. They're bringing it back, but I just don't know how long it's going to take them to get it up. The only true contender is South Carolina State in the East, Tennessee State in the uh, in the West for the SWAC. Let's see. Langston is NAIA. They don't even have facilities, but they can play some football. Uh, let's see. Catching back up on those comments real quick. Um, tired of HBCU is playing each other against top by the conference teams. I heard that about Albany State to the uh, Gulf South. Let's see. TSU had to had to go to the OVC in the '80s. It wasn't a choice. Uh, let's see. Talladega just built a football stadium too. St. Thomas, uh, you maybe. What do you think about Ray Lewis being a head coach at Morgan? Um, I feel. I, I'm listen. If they can, if they can pull it off, Coach Green, that would be amazing. I mean, I think we, I think we're seeing what high level like or high high exposure coaches are doing for the SWAC right now. And so I think Ray Lewis and Morgan would be, I, th- I think he would do a great job. I, I mean, when you're talking about someone who can fire up a team, and I don't know if anyone could do it better than Ray Lewis, man, that dude, it, you go listen to like old speeches in his locker room and be having you ready to run through a wall at just sitting at the house. 
Uh, but, you know, in terms of recruiting and his coaching background, I'm really not sure how it will work. It would really depend kind of like it did for Coach Prom. Coach Green is it depends on the staff he hires around him and, de and it depends on how quickly he hits the ground running with recruiting. But I would imagine that he would do a really good job over there at Morgan. I just don't know his interest level, Coach Green, or if Morgan Morgan and their alumni and their fans want a celebrity coach. It was kind of similar to the Southern situation where they may not want a celebrity coach per se. Um, is it the fact that the MIAC dominating the SWAC and the Celebration Bowl just luck? I don't know, man. Um, I know a lot of people um, – a lot of people, Leonard, think it's because they have such a long layoff. So while the SWAC has to play the SWAC championship, the MEAC team gets a big break and a lot more preparation to get ready for the Celebration Bowl. And that was kind of the theory. But I don't know if it would um, – I don't I don't know if you can just call it just luck. Um, I wish Mr. Ford had an hourly, weekly appearance on HBCU channel. I agree, man. Mr. Ford needs a platform, man. That, that, that guy knows his stuff. Morgan State had three former NFL players as coaches. Former NFL players uh, do not uh, usually make good coaches. Kennesaw State would be nice. Okay, so I called in on Scotty's show to kind of talk about this. Listen, it's like a pipeline dream, though. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Kennesaw State is not going to join the SWAC. Uh, I'm just going to put it as bluntly as that. I I'm sorry. I know it would be a perfect fit because of the Atlanta market. I know they would bring a lot on the football field. It would be it would be a great fit. I would love to see them play some of the top SWAC teams, but Kennesaw State is not going to give up their chance to go play in the FCS playoffs to go play in the Celebration Bowl. They got the enrollment. They got that 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 they're making money in Kennesaw. I mean, their enrollment is crazy right now. So they're not they're not stressing a Celebration Bowl win. Their their goal is to go win an FCS national championship. So Kennesaw State is not going to give that up to join the SWAC, and uh, if if they did, I will I I will be shocked. But I'm telling you, based on the people I've talked to, Kennesaw State isn't even considering going to the SWAC right now. As much as as good of a fit as they might be, um, I, I don't Kennesaw is not going to do that. Lacey could play some football. They are good. Uh, but we said it's a vi Division Two. Also, uh, Winston Salem tried and left the MEAC. How about Fort Valley State, the SWAC? Maybe I don't know anything about their um, about their funding or or anything like that, Khalil. But I mean that could also be a another another option. I went to Talladega College out of high school. They aren't ready for FCS football. The best bet is D three or NAIA if they do get football. Hey Lawrence, appreciate that insight, man. HBCU's movement to these other conferences has not worked out. Fam, you how do you think? How do you think y'all did year one? Bethune got cooked. I think Fairview fared for itself pretty well. I mean, outside of losing to Jackson State, they did um, they did pretty well. Uh, I would say they did pretty well to Mona. But, yeah, Bethune got cooked because they didn't have a quarterback. Morgan State should go after Art Browse as an OC. Morgan State community less toxic versus Grambling. I don't think they're going to touch them, but we'll see. That's up to whoever they hire um, as a head coach. Any, um, anything Georgia State um, – and Georgia Southern, uh, what about Georgia State or Georgia Southern, man? Um, it, like, it, what do y'all, what, what do you want to know about them? I talked to some of TSU alumni. They're saying bring Kentucky State due to distance. Maybe Kentucky State and Tennessee State in the swag. Um, uh, let's see. I think the swag too highly of itself. Um, I'll flip out if Ray Lewis becomes a head coach. He can <laughs> won't touch that. Listen, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch that. Um, I didn't know Chicago State was an HBCU. What is Middle Tennessee State doing? Are they staying in the Ohio Valley? Uh, Mi Middle Tennessee, Middle Tennessee State's in the FBS. Uh, Los J, they're in the um, what, what? I forgot what conference they're even in. They're in like the CUSA, I think. I think Middle Tennessee's in the CUSA, Los J. So they're in the FBS. Um, they're not in the Ohio Valley. Are you? Are you talking about East Tennessee State? Um, East Tennessee State's in the um. In the SoCon, I believe, but yeah, Middle Tennessee State's an FBS team. Kennesaw State would not want to give up the FCS playoffs. If anything, Kennesaw is closer to an FBS than a SWAC move. I agree. Kennesaw is going to jump before they um before they moved anywhere. Would you get any feedback from MSU? Yeah. So for um, so I got a little bit, Jordan. Um, all I know is that 
all this was exactly what I heard. I heard he was highly energetic. He was very smart, but there was not a lot of there was not a lot known about how he's going to run his offense, Jordan, just because he was an offensive analyst. But I heard he was one of the top ones inside the LSU program. So I'm trying to see if I can get some more on his background, Jordan. But right now, he really hasn't proven himself as like a you know a play caller right now, just because he's been in this, uh, an analyst. But right now, um. It looks like it's promising. I, I'm excited to see um, what, what he does. Coach Green, do you, uh, Tennessee, yeah, Tennessee State um, plays Eastern Washington. It's going to be a really good game because Eastern Washington is replacing Eric Barrier and a few other contributors, but that's going to be a real measuring stick on where Tennessee State is this year. Uh, Morgan State had Tyrone Wheatley and, and Jacoby Jones coaches the last three seasons. Morgan State only won like nine games in three seasons with three former NFL players as coaches. Yeah, so they probably, um, they probably won't do that. Kennesaw State was ranked number one a few years ago until South Dakota State flew south. Kennesaw would laugh at the invite. Um, I don't think they're ignoring the um, I don't think they're ignoring the Atlanta market. I, I think right now there's just not a good option in the Atlanta market. Uh, you know, Clark Atlanta's not ready. None like, you know, and then all the schools around the state are are like around that area or PWIs at the FCS level. You got Mercer not too far away. Kennesaw State's right there. Um, it's not they're not they're not ignoring the Atlanta market. There's just not a good option to add right now, man. So it's it's really not the SWAC is ignoring it. It's just they don't have the opportunity to do anything about it right now. No, the MIAC is 11 to 4 versus the SWAC and the MIAC challenge too. It's not just luck. <laughs> I agree. Art Browse uh, was more so an undercover attack against you. Nobody cared when he was coaching at the high school level. Speak to him. Kennesaw would punish the whole SWAC. JSU would be the only team that maybe not blow out. What's up, Kedrick, man? Thank you for tuning in. Uh, let's see. Chicago State is what we call a PBI. They're majority black, but not HBCU because they started off as all white in the 1860s and decades after. Okay. Let's see. Kennesaw will probably end up in the CUSA. I agree. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, what SCS players did good at the combine besides the linemen? Um, so, man, listen. Christian Watson balled at the combine. Christian Watson, it I mean, there's people talking about him potentially being a first round pick T after his combine performance. I believe he ran a, an official an unofficial was like 428, but an official like 43 and he's 64209 and and also was the set had the seventh best long jump at like 11.5 or something like that. And I mean, Christian Watson is putting on a show T. Also, uh Jatari Carter from Southern looked really good today i mean the guy is just so fluid with his hip movement and everything like that. i mean when he was doing his little side to side drills i mean he just he looks way more athletic than what he should be at that size and so i think jatari carter's doing a really good job i'm not sure i got on live he was doing his bench press i'm not sure what he did on the bench press but i'm assuming as strong as he looked at the senior bowl he's probably going to be top 15 in bench press for offensive linemen um also, Cole Kelly, look, I mean, he was spinning it, uh, throwing the ball out there, you know. And in terms of speed, I really thought, you know, the Dixon kid out of Nickel State was going to be faster, but he looked really good in terms of route running and going out there and catching the football. So I think those guys really stood out. Also, EJ from Brown looked, looked every bit the part, man. He was slinging it out there with Cole Kelly. So I think those, those guys have been really big. Also, of course, everyone knows what Trevor Pinning is. Um, in, in terms of in, in terms of his size and athleticism. What's up, Caller? You're live. Oh no, this is um, Lawrence from Atlanta. What's up, man? Yeah, um, I want to talk about the Tennessee State situation. Um I'm one of the main guys that be on Scottish channel be making those comments. Mm -hmm. Um I'm thinking that they're going to the SWAC um over the eighth sun. Um, and the reason why for me is the revenue. Um, if you look at the SWAC's tax returns and everything, the SWAC is actually one of the tops in revenues out of all the FCS conferences. And I think it's probably better for Tennessee to go there, boost its revenue up first, and then split it with their um, Olympic sports to make it better. Over the A's Sun, where the travel is actually going to be just the same as the SWAC. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, because yeah. they're going to have to go to like, you know, they're going to go to Central Arkansas, Kentucky, 
all, all those type of places. And I mean, you know, I think for a t if so, I think, it, and this is kind of what I was trying to get at earlier. It kind of depends on what their goal is, in my opinion. If you're looking to make money and increase the attendance, the swag's a no brainer because you're because mm -hmm. you know, Southern, Fam, Jackson are all going to travel and that they're going to pack out your stadium when you play them. And when you go there, it's going to be a full stadium. It's going to be amazing. Alabama State, Alabama AM could do the same thing when they're, when they're rolling. But if for me, if you're looking, if that's not your goal and you're just looking for just uh, we want to go to a conference where people have moved up and we can get to the playoffs. If the playoffs of your ultimate goal, then I don't think I think you have to rule out the swag because you can't, you know, unless you purposely lose a game and finish second and your and your strength of schedule is that good you're not getting into the playoffs. So for me, I just think it comes down to what Tennessee State wants. If you want money, go to the SWAC for sure. That, that, that'd be stupid not to. But if you want the playoffs, then I, I just I don't know how you justify moving to the SWAC. I, I agree because I would like for them to be in the ace sun myself, but I also look at the Olympic sports too. Mm -hmm. um, Tennessee State's highest attendance in Mel's basketball came against other SWAC institutions. And we all know that basketball makes kind of more money than uh, football with the TV deals. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I think it's just better for them. For South Carolina State's sake, stay with the MEAC because you only got six teams. The pot is bigger. If you go to the SWAC, you got to split it with what, what, 14, what, 12 other teams? Yeah. With the revenue, well, you can stay in the MEAC and collect most of the money. Um. As far as their Olympic sports, um, I would like for them to go to the SOCOM, but South, South Carolina State, do the North Carolina A&T route, win four in a row, four um, celebration bowls, and think about leaving. You make enough money from there. And um, for any team that I think that may move with Tennessee State, it has to be another FCS school. Because if you do a D2, they're going to be on probation for four years. And how that's going to work with the SWAT championship, Let's say they win the SWAC East or something or SWAC West. You you want to make a competitive SWAC championship game on, you know, your main network ESPN. You're not going to put a team that's ineligible as opposed to a celebration bowl because people's not going not going to want to watch because they know who's going to win, right. who's going to represent. So you want to play against two teams to say whoever wins go to Atlanta, then brings more eyes to the TV, which means more money to um to the SWAC. Because um, they said the SWAC championship, the, uh, the SWAC as a whole as a conference made over a million dollars. So you don't want to mm. jeopardize that. So mm. that's my um, main take with that, man. Because I, I, I want Tennessee State to go to the A's sign, but if I, I had to do some digging and some research, they're better off in the SWAC, man. And I'm an oh, FCS yeah. guy. They, they, they're much better in the SWAC. It's much better. They haven't won a national. They haven't won a black national championship since 2014. They've been 500 or below within the past what seven years. Mm -hmm. If you move to the ASUN with Kennesaw State, Central Arkansas, even North <laughs> Alabama, I don't even think they're going to be above 500 in that league. I'm just being honest. They, they, I, honestly, looking at above. it, they, they probably wouldn't. I mean, I think the, I think they'll be able to compete in the OVC this year because I don't think the OVC is going to be very good this year. Um, from top to bottom. I mean, they're probably, you know, second or third in the OVC right now and could compete with it. I mean, if things go right. But I mean, yeah, like Kennesaw is Central Arkansas. I mean, that they're on a different level right now. Yeah. Bye, well, right, Blue. Hey, man, I appreciate you calling in, man. Have a good one. All right, man. Let's get to some of these conferences. Yes, South Carolina State supposedly, reportedly got an invite from the CAA and the SOCON, um, but I don't know, you know, what came of that. Uh, Winston Salem State and Savannah State have already tried FCS football. Yeah, neither of them worked. Um, neither of them worked. So I don't see either of those teams taking another chance. SWAC has revenue, but these other conferences have better facilities and more exposure. Wow, I definitely believe Kennesaw State will join the Sun Belt. I see App State becoming their rivalry. That would be it, listen. Once Kennesaw gets rolling, that would be a hell. That would be a hell of a game. Tennessee State has to move to the SWAC to rejuvenate their program. I mean, in terms of financially and attendance, I mean they. I, I don't see the attendance wise. It makes the most sense. Let's just be honest. Again, Tennessee State doesn't bring nothing to the SWAC. They're looking for a playoff run. Uh, what TV deal basketball on the SWAC? I. 
I, listen, I'm not a basketball guy. I don't know if there's a deal, if there's ever been a deal. I, I am the last person to ask about basketball. I am the college football guy, and that is that, that is it with this. Um, I, I'm in a I'm an alum that loves the swag, but I don't want us in the swag, um, especially while the eyes on HPC football come get some of this exposure, get some of these bowl games. Let's see. Uh, so you want them traveling to PWS with no fan base in tow? How many games did you attend this year? TSU has to make money and increase its attendance if they want to go to FBS. Yeah, I th- I, they're not they're not there right now. They're not there in terms of moving up yet. The TSU AD most recent comments: OVC doesn't have um, other HBCUs, and a long term move is to move to FBS. He did not mention playoffs at all. Okay, well if it's not playoffs, then go to the SWAC. If you don't want the playoffs and all, and and, and you want to play other HBCUs and, and get the attendance and get the money, go to the SWAC then, and and that's that's your move. Or I mean potentially go you know go to the MEAC if that's what you want to do if, if you're just looking for a celebration because i mean i think tennessee state would be more competitive in the MEAC than it would be the swack i don't think tennessee state would compete with the top of the swack right this second um all of our home games in magic city is southern heritage classic uh swack makes all this money we can't get top recruits in fall let's see tennessee state will be will be last in the pioneer conference <laughs> dang lawrence you you don't you don't trust um you don't you don't you don't trust Tennessee State and the Pioneer, man. Langston University in Oklahoma would be a perfect fit for the SWAC if Tennessee State goes to the SWAC. And, and that's an interesting pick. I see I see the uh the Bowie State thing too. I know Bowie State's been one that we've talked about a lot tonight too. Um let's see here. Um also Tennessee State attendance is very poor outside of the classic, to be fair. Yeah, I think they were um I think I got the attendance numbers right here. I'm pretty sure they were outside the top. 30 in attendance this year if i'm not mistaken um they were extremely extremely low like i'm looking right here and and yeah they were they had horrible yeah tennessee state this year guys was 94th in overall attendance 4023 was their average attendance they're behind a bunch that they're behind a lot of people I'll, I'll just put it like that. They're behind Morgan, Gardner Webb, UT Martin, Davidson, Eastern Illinois, Wofford, Dixie State, Alcorn, Sacred Heart, Idaho, Maine. I mean, yeah, they're behind everybody. Even Valley and Bethune averaged more than Tennessee State um, this past year. The SWAC is full. They need to go to the MEAC. That's gonna. Uh, we'll see. I I don't. I just don't see them going. If they're gonna go, they're gonna want the exposure. So they're gonna want to go to the SWAC, in my opinion. They're going to want the exposure because right now, up until the celebration bowl, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't think the MEAC has that same pull as the SWAC does. Uh, let's see, they get more from the Alabama teams. Uh, yeah, man, listen, I don't watch a lot of basketball, man, but that women's team for Jackson State is a problem. They got some ballers on that team. I, I watched the game the other night. Langston is N I N I N A I A. No way they will jump over D two and go to D D one anytime soon. The SWAC is full, potentially, but I mean, listen, there, there's going to be conferences for like 16 teams now, so I, I don't know if you could say it's 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 full. It's, conferences are never full anymore. If 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 they all move to the SWAC, then you could talk about a celebration ball playoff system. That's interesting. If you do the pod system, so uh, I guess I got I'll give some background on that. So the pod system was potentially what the SEC is going to do once Texas and Oklahoma come in. So you're going to have four different pods of four teams and and all these and all the teams in the pod play each other and then you have a cross pod game and then you have like a, a rivalry game that you can schedule to the side so like alabama auburn if they weren't in the same pod would always have that game together um and so if the swack went to that that would be an interesting playoff system because you could have the pod winner so you would have all four pod winners and then you could you could have um those four you know, potentially play each other, but you would have to add two more, you know, four more teams to get to 16 to Mona. And I mean, you, you would probably just, I, I don't know how, I don't know who you would get for 16 teams is where I mean, we're struggling to get to 14. Cause you would add Tennessee state, South Carolina state. I guess if you want, you can go, you can go pull uh Norfolk state. And then who do you want for that last team? But you're going to have to have 16 to do a proper pod system. So that would be, uh, we'll see on that one. Um, let's see. I don't think Tennessee State has money issues. Is it? Um, it is just an attendance issue. If Tennessee State wants a celebration bowl, they should join the MEAC. If it's all about the celebration bowl, join the MEAC. 
because that's a way easier road than trying to fight through the swag. No swag school wants to travel to Oklahoma and play a game. Stop it. Oh, man. He, she said, dang, that's some high school numbers. <laughs> some of those teams just made it to the FCS. Um, how terrible. Even Valley. <laughs> oh, the exposure is just when other teams uh, play JSU. Oh, that's a now that's a take. Now that's a take. A lot of people aren't going to like it. Um, North Carolina a and is not coming to Mona. Listen, North Carolina a and has made it, it like abundantly clear. They don't want the Celebration Bowl. They don't want the MEAC. They don't want the SWAC. North Carolina a and only goal is to go play in December in the FCS playoffs and then eventually move on and go play at the FBS level. North Carolina a and is doing their own thing. They're, they're not going to join the SWAC. I'm, I'm just telling you, North Carolina a and is on its own trajectory right now in terms of what they're doing, moving conferences and things like that. Uh, Coppa State and Maryland Eastern Shore needs to fill the football team and save the MEAC. So, someone's going to have to save it if South Carolina State leaves. Somebody is going to have to save the MEAC, um, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. She said not not A and T. Um, let's catch up. Let's uh, for Tennessee State. Let's go to the SWAC, or you won't be able to sustain. Um, Tennessee State's got like five hundred mil coming their way, so I don't think money's an issue. Exposure is still an issue. Um, exposure is definitely still an an issue. Just merge the two MIAC and the SWAC. The so that that would it would be a super conference. Um, it would definitely be a super conference. But then. So you would have to, you would probably have to make the celebration bowl the national championship for for that giant conference, and then you would, I mean, you would have to have like a bunch of pods. It, you would have to go to the pod system. You cannot do a division thing. I mean, you could separate into old MIAC versus versus SWAC or something like that. But I think the pod system, if you just merge the two, would be the best bet right there. North Carolina A and T is a track school. <laughs> They are though, man. They're they're number one team in the country right now, right? I'm pretty sure. Are they still number one number one team in the country? I know last week when I went live, they were, they were the number one team in the country. So, if they're the number one team in the country, man, Miak baseball's in trouble. They only have four teams. I didn't know who doesn't have baseball, Lawrence, in, in the Miak. Um, let's see. Having having a Georgia team in the SWAC would be cool. Mainly the Atlanta market, but I don't think any of them truly uh, qualify. Um, they don't, and and that's what I'm saying. So I know there was a comment earlier about the um the SWAC ignoring the Atlanta market, and like you 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 can't blame them for not having a team in Atlanta when there's no teams that are ready. You just there's there's nobody in the Atlanta market that one is going to accept an invite to the SWAC, or two, um, they're just not ready. They don't have the finances. They don't have the resources. And I think Mr. Ford broke all the Atlanta schools down earlier where. It just it's just not possible for the SWAC. They're not ignoring it. It's just not a possibility. Okay, so they're number three. That's that's still good, man. Pod system is northeast, uh, southeast divisions, northwest and southwest divisions with four teams in each section. Oh man, I, I love it, Timona. And now you just got to get those sixteen teams in. Um, you got to get the sixteen teams in there, and then I think we're rolling on that. Um, I mean, I guess you could do like, I mean. It, at 12, I mean, it would just be four, like you just have to get to 16 because you don't um, you, you can't do it at 14 because then it'd be such a weird number. So you got to get to 16. So you got to you got to hope you pulled some MEAC teams and just go that way. I don't cover baseball, man. This this show is strictly football. I don't, you know, I watch baseball and basketball and stuff like that in like my off time. But the only thing I talk about on here is football for the most part. North Carolina a and only goal is to, is to get to FBS. I agree, man. They, they've been um a thousand percent committed to getting to the fbs and, and competing they want to win a national championship i mean that's that's what it comes down to is they want to be in frisco with one of those mvfc teams and and, and they, they want to win a national title that, that's it howard south carolina state nc central don't play baseball man appreciate that ralph appreciate that um the Delaware running back you interview, what year is he? He's going to the draft T, the one that I interviewed today, Nigel Hill. He's a DB and he's entering the draft this year. So he he was a senior this past year. He was him and him and um Kendrick Whitehead for Delaware were like two of the intricate pieces on when they made that final four run. TSU was three and five in the OVC in 2014. They didn't go to the playoffs then either. 
for the SWAC playoffs with 15 teams. Take the two top two West teams, top two East teams, and go from there with cross division play. There you go. So if you go to 14, you could still do a playoff. But I do like the pod system, though. I re- I'm a big fan of the pod system. I mentioned that when the SEC was going to do it, but you could still do that. Because so this year, I, this year would have been a really interesting pod system. I think this year, this year would have been good because I I, I would have loved to see a FAMU Jackson State rematch. I really, really would. Um, I, I think I think that would for the swag since you already don't play in the playoffs, you can have the celebration ball on the same date, have your swag championship, your first round games, and then get to the swag, um, the swag championship. I love it. March Matt Man, I to Mona, listen, I will fill out more brackets than like should be humanly possible. I promise. I'm a big, a big college basketball fan, mostly because you know my school is really good this year. You know, top five team in the country. You know, they, they were projected to play Fam U. And I was like, man, Mr. Campbell's gonna be upset with me rocking the Auburn gear over the Fam U gear in that in the first round of the playoffs. I don't think I think all corners projected to get in for the SWAC now. Last time I looked, but we'll see. Yeah, but March Madness is 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 life. The only GA possibility is Albany State, maybe maybe Fort Valley, potentially. Have you heard anything about how we're going to the CAA? Um, I haven't heard anything about it. I would, I know, so I know the CAA reached out to some MEAC teams because they wanted to bring some people with North Carolina A and T, and the CAA has been real, you know, upfront about their expansion. So I know they reached out, but I have not heard, you know, anything about Howard accepting it or going or anything like that, but I know they've been offered at least. Look it up, man. Uh, we were the last HBCU in the playoffs besides FAMU. The last game for FCS football is the second weekend of January. You can do an HBCU playoff system. Uh, it's it's there. You absolutely can do it. Can Bethune Cookman win the East if, we, if they have a quarterback? Uh, I hmm. No, I, I just, I can't see it, man. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't see it. I mean, I think they if, if they get a proper quarterback, which I guess Jalen Jones is probably going to be the guy moving forward. If I had to guess, you know, on March 4th, but I still think I still think you have to get, you know, you've got you got the um, Everett at tight end. But outside of that, you really don't have a bunch of playmakers. And you're going to you're going to have to be super deep at the play. Just having playmakers this year in the swag. You look at um. Uh, you look at FAMU with the wide receivers and running backs they're going to have this year. Jackson State would just, I mean, uh, listen, they're going to have so much talent on that offensive side of the ball. And then you're going to look at AM just reloaded on the offensive side of the ball. You you look at you look at Grambling loaded up on weapons. I just don't think I don't think um yeah, I don't think Bethune's going to have enough depth at at skill players, uh, Khalil to win it this year. But I mean, if they get a third place finish, I think that'll be great. But they're not going to be as bad as they were last year, Khalil. I'll offer you a little bit of hope there. The Blue Buzz, I'm not hearing Eric Berrier's name, really. Man, they forgot about him, T. I'm so frustrated. Listen, I don't want to get on a rant about this, but the fact that Eric, Ber- Eric Berrier wasn't invited to the NFLPA Bowl, East-West Shrine Bowl, the Senior Bowl, the Combine, nothing, it is, I, he's, he is being just shut out, and I am upset about it because Eric Berrier should have been the first FCS quarterback to get an invite to anything, and I'll stand on that. What conference does a pod system? I've never heard of it. So um, the the SEC is looking into doing a pod system once they add Texas and Oklahoma. Um, that that's their that's their plan at least. Is when Texas and Oklahoma come, they potentially are going to do a pod. March Madness, Gonzaga, Duke, Wisconsin, Auburn. Man, listen, M- Mr. Carey, love you for that, man. War Eagle for that. If we get to the final four, I've already bought my tickets for the final four. Uh, already bought my tickets, so I'm I'm hoping you're right. Texas Southern still run the swag in basketball. I won't argue that after they beat Florida, man. Or has anyone heard about the MEAC expansion? I haven't heard anything about the um the MEAC expanding. In my, I I think right now they gotta. Who are they gonna add? That's the question. And you know, are they not looking to expand? Or they don't have anybody because everyone every time someone suggests a D two team, someone calls in and knocks it down. So unless they can add a D two team, or they're going to start adding PWIs who potentially could take a risk, like maybe the MEAC reaches out to the Big South teams and tries to bring them in. I just can't see them adding anybody right now. Shout out to Coach Reed and the Lady Tigers. You should you should have had your own March Madness bracket pool winner gets tickets to an upcoming. I might do that, T. Listen, when March Madness, you gotta just give me an idea. When March Madness comes around, I might do a subscriber uh March Madness bracket pool. I like that. Bethune Cookman has problems as a school. Um <laughs> Bethune will mean more than just a tight end. You are killing me, man. 
Any advice on what Norfolk State should do since our conference is in shambles? Uh, I, if Norfolk State is going to do anything, LJ, I'm going to say that I'm going to say Norfolk State should join the CAA. I think in terms of you know location and things like that, I think the CAA will be perfect for Norfolk State. It might take a minute for them to be able to compete in the CAA, but um, I, I, I love that the 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 CAA would probably be the move there for Norfolk State if you're looking for an FCS conference to join. It's going to be rough the first few years, LJ. So take a deep breath. You're going to take your lumps, but ultimately, I think that's probably your best move if you're looking to leave, leave the MEAC. Bethune is a private school, so they don't get state money like the rest of the SWAC. Uh, 2021 SWAC playoffs could have been Alcorn versus J State, Prairie View versus FAMU. And then I think ultimately a rematch, man, with FAMU, Jackson State as the Celebration Bowl. That, that would have been crazy, um, Israel. That would have been insane. Murray State will upset some brackets. I agree. Murray State's so good this year, T. I mean, th they are they – are, ridiculous on the court i mean they got they got some guys who can ball auburn's played on the past few years we didn't have them this year and i was glad because they, they that was an upset waiting to happen auburn fans must be glad to take their minds off of football shenanigans I, ea don't get me started there's a reason why auburn hasn't been on this podcast in a while bethune's leadership signed a bad deal on some dorms or something okay the WAC 16 had pods in the Mount West Conference and was created. Yep, that that was the last time it was done. But I know the SEC, um, the SEC is looking to do it moving forward. BCU Valley and UAPB are not a threat in the SWAC. Let's be honest, not this year, most likely. That'd be a uh, fire if Norfolk can go to the CAA. It'd be it'd be a playing partner for North Carolina A and T up there. So it'd be interesting. Fort Valley into the MEAC. I don't know anything about Fort Valley's enrollment or their financial situation and facilities, John, but I'll look into it. And if anyone knows anything about Fort Valley, call, call in or comment uh, your opinion. FCS playoffs are not worth it for SWAC teams. I'm sorry, financials are horrible. The new negotiation for the Celebration Bowl pays $2 million per team, guaranteed money. FCS playoffs don't come close. Yeah, financially, it doesn't make sense for the SWAC teams. I, I, I'm not even going to argue that anymore. I, I get it. Uh, but for the second, you know, for the team that doesn't make the celebration bowl, I think it's a great consolidation prize, at least for FAMU to be able to go play in the playoffs or all corner Alabama AM, I think is great. Norfolk State has nice facilities, but they need a better coach. And it's hard to recruit in Virginia with so many FCS teams on top of the FBS teams. And now with James Madison moving up and getting more scholarships, James Madison is going to tear that whole area up with recruiting. Um, Eric Barry should have came to the SWAC and let everyone up. He would have won all the offensive awards. Listen, man, he might have thrown for 6,000 yards in the SWAC. Let's just be honest. Eric Barry would have would have done work in, in the SWAC. WSD did a process from the 90s. It didn't work. What should North Carolina Central, Morgan State, and Delaware State do if Miet go down? Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. It, I think with those three teams, you're just going to have to find a home. I would hope they would stick together, Khalil, but they'd probably fall into the Big South, the SOCON, the OVC, something like that. One of those FCS conferences looking for teams, but I would imagine probably the Big South would be the would be the conference if it's still you know up and going. That would probably inherit them and and try to um, try to keep them alive. Eric Berry won all the awards in FCS. Fort Valley better stay in the C. <laughs> Um, man, you know, I like the episode. I listen, I the one thing I like about the episodes, and I, you know, it's been a theme of every episode is that they highlight a different player each time. Like it was, you know, that they really talked about Tony Gray and James Houston one episode. They went into Shador, they went into Santee Marshall, they went in, um, they, they went into Aubrey. I really like how it's not just it's not just about the season, but they also let you like in depth look at the players. Like I thought when over the episodes, just looking into the coaches interactions with all these players in they're getting the players thoughts and they're putting the spotlight, all the other players opinions on that player. I think it's really cool because it gives film on those players and it gives spotlight on those players. And now someone who might not know who, you know, I, most Jackson state fans know, I understand, but like a fan that just on bar stool that didn't know anything about Aubrey might become a big fan of Aubrey and watch a game this year. So I think, Jackson's what Jackson State does well in all these episodes is they understand for fan involvement and fan connection with the program, you have to relate to the players. And I think they're doing an excellent job with that. 
And I think those are my favorite parts of the episode because, I mean, we all remember watching the scooter and and, and watching these games and, and seeing what was going on. But to get the behind the scenes and the real, like, raw thoughts of the players and things like that is what I love most about it. But, man, listen, all the episodes have been great. I liked episode four, too. Can Willie Simmons win the big game? Uh uh, potentially EA, um, you know, he, he, he really, he, he did it last year, but when you look at, you know, the Jackson state game, he should have won, you know, you look at the block field goal, you look at a bunch of the opportunities. They let Jackson state off the hook. That one really hangs, hangs on me, but the Southeastern game was a game that no one really expected them to win uh, really and truly. I mean, there was a lot of people who were like, you know, they're going to get run through this. It, what happened was exactly what a lot of people predicted to happen. So I don't really hold the Southern game, against him, but um, for me, I think that Jackson state game this year is so big for him. He had, he, you know, I know it's going to be tough. They have to win this year. I mean, or if they go out there and get embarrassed, it's going to look really, really bad on fam. And so I, he's got some he's got some opportunities this year. The Grambling game, the Alabama A and M game at home, and the Jackson State game are going to be huge for Willie Simmons this year. Yes, but no one talked about him and no invites. He would have gone to the HBCU Combine and been noticed more in the swag. Yeah, I, I, I won't I won't argue with you there. Fort Valley, we get destroyed in the MEAC. Albany State beat them fifty seven to nothing. Jesus Christ, got handled on that game. <laughs> got handled. Yeah, Dana Beers did a great job. Let, let's just be honest. I mean, that the documentaries have been great, really and truly. I, I wish more teams would do them. I know it's impossible, but I, I love it. I went to all I went to all corn will take art browse. I, I don't is all corn looking for an OC? I don't think so, but I it I don't think any SWAC teams are hiring art browse anytime soon. FCS playoffs bring uh the the fringe benefits, top recruits, NFL scouts, sponsors, top money from FBS games and exposure. Y'all name all HPCU schools who want a postseason game as a D1 AA or FCS men member. <laughs> oh man. I mean, Fam FAMU is the only one that's won a, na a national championship, Lawrence. I know Jackson, I I'm pretty sure Jackson State before they were they were swag got to one of the rounds but i know they got blown out one year i remember it was like the 80s i was looking and uh montana state absolutely dominated them back in the 80s when they were in the playoffs and i don't remember who they played in 97 but um the swack is um winless in the in in the playoffs man the swack is winless um in the playoffs and, and then for the MEAC, i don't remember if north carolina ant has won a playoff game but i know the swack is winless right now in the fcs playoffs the JSU episodes um, and filming a new way for the SWAC to recruit. It, man, it, it's different. And that's why, and that's why other, other programs have to catch up to Jackson State, man. Because right now they could say, man, you're going to have a, I mean, you're going to have a film crew following around. You're going to be on bar stool at seven o'clock prime time with thousands of people in there. You might be the, you, you might be the feature kid that episode. I mean, they got so much to build on, man, in recruiting. So, We'll see. All court needs help in their sports medicine department. <laughs> Man, you are too much. Even not, let's see. Um, any new coaching hires in the SWAC or FCS recently? Um, not the SWAC that I know of, man. It's probably, you know, a lot of the hires right now, Jordan, are really just like assistants and things like that. Um, just because uh, most of the top positions are filled. Like you don't see a lot of people going into spring practice without OCs, DCs and head coaches, you know, you got Morgan and you got, you know, Grambling, of course, but those situations are a bit unique. But um, in terms of like major ones, um, nothing, nothing to report right now, man. Uh, I'll keep my ear to the ground. I know there's a few, a few positions open right now that I would like to see filled. Let's see. Call it, call it your live. Hey, this is Mr. Ford. I was just calling in to answer a question. Somebody just asked you about HBCUs winning in the playoffs. You got to mm -hmm. remember now, Billy Joe won multiple games in the playoffs as head coach. He beat App State one year. He beat Troy State one year. Um, South Carolina State beat Tennessee State in the uh, 1AA playoffs, I think, in 81 or 82. Uh, I believe in 99, North Carolina A&T beat uh, Tennessee State. Now, you're absolutely right about the SWAC. I don't think no SWAC team has ever won a 1AA uh, playoff game. 
But there have been some games won by Sam. If you go back, now you, I think I don't know if you mentioned it. Rudy Hubbard won the initial one AA championship mm-hmm. in 1978. Uh, I think he beat UMass for the national championship. Yeah. You, like I said, if you go back and look at Billy Joe, Billy Joe one year defeated Troy State. Another year he beat App State. He lost in the semifinals, I believe, to Youngstown State. This is when Youngstown State was led by Jim Trussell. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think South Carolina State might have some wins in the one uh, AA championship. And um, like I said, I think North Carolina and T beat Tennessee State maybe in 1999. Yeah. Okay. What you say? Uh, Asmus for about no uh, Fort Valley's Division Two. Uh, we really don't have a school. See the difference between us and Florida. Florida has one HBCU state. That's Florida and M. See, in Georgia, we got Albany State, we got Fort Valley State, we got Savannah State, okay? And you, I think you said it or somebody said it. Savannah State tried to go to the MEAC. That didn't work and because uh, they didn't have the money. They didn't have the budget. And so, no, we don't really have a school in the uh, in in Georgia uh, that could go into the SWAC uh, on that, H, on that uh, FCS level. We don't have it. Yeah, because I know someone commented that they were upset that the SWAC was ignoring the Atlanta market. And I'm like, I don't think they're ignoring it. I just don't think there's an no, option no. that they can use. No. Right. But, well, see, this is what they need to do. And I think Dr. McClellan and them are getting to it. Probably in, I would say, either the last week in September, the first week in October, what you do is a double header. You would come here and do maybe a Florida, you'd have... Florida A&M in the second game against uh, Southern, and then you'd have maybe Alabama State or Alabama A&M would be in the first game. They would play Jackson State. You would draw. You would. You that dome would be packed all day. That's what you do. Cause now remember, there are some stipulations about uh, when you can play after that. Uh, what they call the SWAC MIAC Challenge. I think it's open after about that last week in December. I mean, the last week in September, first first week in October. But what you what they need here is a double header, because really, when you look at cities like um, Atlanta, D.C., and some of them other cities, we have more black college graduates than any other city in the country. I mean, we got black college graduates here in Atlanta in numbers. Okay, there are a lot of Jackson State people here. There are a lot of Southern people here. There are a lot of Tennessee State people here. There are, oh, I mean, there's millions of FAMU people here in Atlanta, okay, in the Atlanta area, okay? And that's what he needs to do. They need to come here with a double header, either that last week in September, that first week in October. You would go with Florida and m and Southern in the second game and a Jackson State and maybe Alabama and m in the first game. Okay. Ooh, that's uh, what we need. I like that. And I, I want to ask because I know someone last live stream mentioned this. They said they want to see us a, a classic come to Chicago again. Um, oh yes. Ooh. And you got it's gotta be Jackson State. It's got and whoever Jackson State brings up there will be fine, but it's gotta be Jackson State. Okay. It's gotta be Jackson State. Yeah, I, I was gonna yeah. ask you, and then someone also mentioned Minneapolis too. I don't know if I, I don't I, I don't know if there's like a big you know, place I mean, you can play at the Viking Stadium, but I don't know. I'm not familiar with many up now. Detroit, you could do it in Detroit. You could do it in Chicago. You can do it in Indianapolis. I'd like to see Gramlin take somebody to L.A. to the L.A. Coliseum Ooh. or to that SoFi Stadium. I don't know if they could get SoFi, but I'd like to see them. To see, here's the thing that I what I'm arguing about. The last count I I I, I saw in a, a publication it said that. Since Deion Sanders had come to Jackson State, Jackson State had received $186 million of free publicity, TV, radio, Internet, whatever. This is what I'm saying. Schools like, when you get that kind of publicity, schools like Jackson State, Southern University, Texas Southern University, those schools should be the largest black universities in America. There's no reason Jackson State shouldn't have 12,000 or 13,000 undergraduates. There's no reason Southern University and Baton Rouge shouldn't have 13 or 14,000 undergraduates on their campus. 
There's no reason Texas Southern, you're in the fourth largest city in America. You're in Houston, Texas, Harris County. You should be the largest black university in America. Take advantage of this. Take it, President Hudson, the president of uh, Southern University, the president of Texas Southern, the swack is being publicized all over the world. Let me tell you something. Everybody in America is talking about Art Browns just left Grambling. I ain't just talking about black people. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody knew that Art Browns was at Grambling. I'm saying take advantage of your enrollment. Southern, once again, Jackson State should have no less than 13,000 students, undergraduate. Texas Southern should have at least 15,000 undergraduate students, okay? Uh, I said Jackson State Southern, uh, who has uh, Florida and yeah. Florida and should have at least 15,000 undergraduates on this campus. Take advantage of this time that you got. You're in the spotlight. Yeah. Listen, have a good night, uh, okay? You too, Mr. Ford. Thank you. Oh, all right. Shout out to Mr. Ford, man. Shout out to Mr. Ford, man. We're going to go for probably another 15, 30 minutes, man. So get y'all's calls in if y'all want to call, talk about our brows, talk about Tennessee State to the swag, FCS players at the combine, whatever y'all want to talk about. We got y'all. Let's see. Uh, need to look at Charlotte, North North Carolina. I, listen, that that could be – I know uh, Coach Simmons mentioned um, potentially like a week zero game a, in North Carolina. Let's see. They don't have anywhere for them to live on campus. Let's see. University of Houston is in walking distance from Texas Southern. UH take, taking all those students. TSU has more students than many of the SWAT schools and need to engage the fans. Uh, Texas Southern is legit in the middle of downtown Houston. How did these high school students, um, how do you get these high school students to enroll at HBCUs instead of P5s? Uh, some of those schools don't have the infrastructure for that many students. HBCU is having incredibly small recruiting budgets. I think JSU was like 15K or so. Do you know if fans can donate directly to the recruiting budget? Um, I don't think you can dictate where your funds go. I mean, like you can donate to like the athletic department and things like that. You can dictate what department you go to, you donate to at most universities, but I do not believe you can tell them how to spend the money, uh, Damon. So I, I don't think you could say I'm going to donate to the athletic budget and it has to be used for recruiting. I don't, I don't think it works like that. So, um, I'm pretty sure that um, you can't you can't tell them where to use it. You can just donate to the athletic budget. But really and truly, it, it's going to come down. It, it, there's other factors playing into the money situation. It's not just people donating directly to the athletic athletic department and things like that. I saw the Steelers were eyeing James Houston. Man, James Houston and and, and Watt off the edge would be just disgusting. It, that would be absolutely disgusting. Jacksonville, Florida has a huge HBCU following. That'd be hey, the Jaguar Stadium's right there, man. The HBCUs have to compete better in academics. Howard has to medical and law school, law school, Morgan Top Engineering School, Cop and Top Nursing Program, HBCUs and the SWAC need to be award winning academics. Charlotte is a band city. They have battles with the bands there, but they don't play ball there. That would have been great for the for the MEAC. If Tennessee State don't join the SWAC, the SWAC should not play them again. That's interesting. I wonder if you know. Well, I know the I know the Jackson State isn't going to be playing them, but we'll see. Um, well, we'll see. We'll see who schedules them moving forward if they decide not to join. And you get their financial aid offices together. Y'all know I ain't lying. Texas Southern and PB combined is about seventeen to eighteen thousand undergraduates. The LF is the only school to produce multiple first rounders in the same draft. Will JSU do it again if Sue? Um. Damon, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's gonna be a minute. I mean, it nowadays it is going to be very, very tough to get two FCS players from the same program drafted in the same year in the first round. Um, I mean, like just to put it in perspective, like James Houston dominated the SWAC. Like, I mean, he was the best player week in and week out in the SWAC all season long. And James Houston might not be a second round pick. Um. So to get two players who are going to get first round grades from the SWAC um, on the same team is going to be very very tough. So I would give it, I would give it a like a 
less than 5% chance, Damon, right now to get two first-rounders from the same school in the FCS level. I mean, FCS players have enough struggles getting drafted in the first round uh, right now. And I, you know, I, I think it's going to be tough. I'll say that it's going to be really tough to do that again. North Carolina A and T and NCCU is playing in Charlotte this year. Okay, so so Charlotte is being tapped into at least. Blue, who is guard? Uh, guard play for Auburn basketball, bro. Uh, let's see, they got. Oh man, we they got KD Johnson. He's number zero. Uh, usually plays to two. Um, they got Zeb Jasper, point guard, right there. And I'm blanking on the backup's name um, behind him, but KD Johnson and Zeb and, and Zeb Jasper are the two like main guards. Uh, be fresh that 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 we that we put out there, and then of course we we go through Walker Kessler on the inside, man, and then Jabari is just a whole different level right there. What's up, caller? You're live. How you doing, Blue? How you doing, man? man it's Friday night. We we, we spend this Friday night with you. <laughs> nah, man. I appreciate all y'all tuning in, man, for sure. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing, man. Good things, good things, man. Uh, you know, the, the, I just wanted to comment on Tennessee State. Tennessee State has been on 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 the on the edge of going to the SWAC for a decade. Uh, I think I think at this point in time, given the relationship between Eddie George and Dion, and also the athletic director and the president knowing that the ten game of tennis is down, I, I just don't see them not coming to the SWAC at this time. The question is, who's coming with them? Uh, is it Miles? Is it uh, Talladega starting the athletic program, football program? Uh, Wiley starting the football program? Or is it South Carolina State, Savannah State, or Kentucky State? That's the question. Uh, who, who else is coming with them? Uh, the other thing, you know, uh, it's a lot of politics involved, the million-dollar fee that they have to pay. Um, but also, too, the smart thing to do for the SWAT commissioner at this point in time, he should be gathering a team of investors together to go ahead and take out the buy out the MEAC. And then you'll have a true East-West division with 12 teams in each division. Um, and that would, that would bring the playoff and more significance to the actual celebration bowl. That's 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 the smart money. That's the smart bet. That's what any SEC investor would be trying to do, uh, and that's what should happen in the SWAC at this point in time. And there's enough time for it to happen, but that's where the smart money should go toward the the, the bigger strategy. Um, but I would like your thoughts on that. Uh, you know, I know the SIAA is up and coming. Uh, the CI, CIAA also is up and coming with uh, mergers with the uh, Big South uh, and others. OVC, uh, some lot of action in a lot of action in the college division, and it's not just football. Uh, also with baseball, uh, base, uh, baseball, girls so soccer, and uh, softball. Uh, that has a lot to do with it. So uh, I would like your thoughts on the overall winning strategy of what should be on the mind of a SWAT commissioner. If you were a SWAT commissioner, mm. uh, what would be your strategy as growing the sport? Because to be honest with you, it wouldn't be hard for 15 to 20 investors to come in and put up 2 million a piece and you basically take over the, take over the MEAC and make a true East-West division. That is not rocket science. That's yeah. the smart money. Yeah, I mean, for me, like that that's that's the biggest thing I'm going to be looking for is, you know, the, the SWAT grab fam you and bethune and mm -hmm. everyone was kind of looking at the me act like okay are y'all gonna be okay y'all just lost a and t you just lost fam you those are arguably your two best teams in that conference and now you're looking and, and they're losing they're, they're losing teams rapidly and you know there's been this big movement like let's make sure we keep you know like hbc football in the spotlight but it's really shifted to let's keep swack football in the spotlight and so I agree that the only way the MEAC is going to survive if they lose South Carolina State is if the SWAC helps them out. You 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 got to – like you're going to have to combine. You're going to have to help them find – team, like give them a team that you don't want. Like something's going to have to happen to, to save them because I don't think – in my opinion, I don't think the MEAC can save itself. 
And well, the, well South, Carolina, South Carolina State right now in this current condition with 1,800 students, the only place they could go is the SWAC. Yep. And, the only place they could go. And I know that, and I know they're taking offers for the CAA and the SOCON and things like that. But I just, I, for me, you know, you just got done winning the Celebration Bowl. You know, right now it's not looking like you have any sort of foundation to move to the FBS. So, I like for me, I would just let the offers roll off my back. Like, yes, I appreciate y'all reaching out. I'm appreciating that y'all, you know, want us to come to your conference, but we just can't because right now South Carolina State is not going to be able to compete in the CAA. I'm going to be yeah. straight up honest with you. And for me, I just, I, I think right now when you're looking at the MEAC, unless you're just going to let those, you know, other MEAC teams just kind of fall to the wayside and just fend for themselves, which fending for themselves would probably mean joining the Big South. I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, but the real talk, I mean, the smart money would be, you know, to go get your Maggie Johnson, your Charles Barkley. Yep. All of your other other investors put up money and and actually merge Swack and Mia. You have a true, a true East West division. Yeah, and you could uh, have a playoff and, and that, playoff system and every, like like Timona in the comments were saying, and it goes back to I know the narrative on like All Scripts channel and like a bunch of other channels is we want a HBCU playoff. If you merge them, you right. have the teams to do it. You're gonna have the money. You, you know, if you get the like you said the right investors, right sponsors, you're gonna have the money to do it. And, and like. As SWAC fans, as MEAC fans, as HBCU football fans, more football is good, right? Like we're all we're all football mm -hmm. fans here. Seeing those matchups in the playoffs in in different locations, because I mean, you know, you'll have the Celebration Bowl in Atlanta. Are you going to do a home and home for the first round, or do you want to try to sell contracts and get stadiums to bid? You have a game in Dallas. You have a game in New Orleans. You got a game, you know, in in Charlotte. You got a game, you know, some some Jacksonville or something like that. I mean, I think there's endless possibilities if you combine. But right now, it's kind of weird how the swax is kind of sitting by as the MEAC is like on life support right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's because uh, we, we don't know the inner workings, but also too, we don't have uh, an investor group that's actually publicizing their, their demand. So uh, that's the other thing. Also too, Albany state, Albany state, but I, I, from what I know, Going to the sweat would be a dream come true for the fans and, and, and students because that's kind of, that's a better attendance on the games. Uh, but I don't know if the swag is interested in, in or even pursuing that avenue. Also, there's a dark horse in Texas that nobody's talking about, and that's the University of Paul Quinn. Nobody's mm. talking about that particular school that's in the Dallas metro area that has an athletic program that's also looking to create a football program. So, uh, you know, nobody's even mentioned them. But if you're talking about right now, as far as what the SWAC needs, the SWAC needs Tennessee State and South Carolina State. Uh, in, in the meantime, you know, uh, Talladega, on the football program. Uh, and, they, and I don't know how they let, you know, Dion go to school there and leave and go to Jackson without putting <laughs> off on the table. How, how do you do that? How do you let that slide through your fingers? So, uh, <laughs> You know that that it's a lot a lot of those things going on, but I have to before I go any further before I get off this call, I got to give a shout out to Alcorn State, whose boys basketball team is tied for the number one spot in in, in the SWAC right now. Yeah. And after tomorrow's uh, win, it'll be a true first place in the SWAC. Hey, uh, and I watch out for this. Whoop. What, go ahead. Oh, you, you you guys are projected in the tournament. I was looking at the bracketology today. They got y'all as the 16th seed. Yeah, yeah, but. It, it, it has, and, and, and watch out for this football season. Uh, uh, the physical training coming from Penn State to Alcorn. You know, they actually played that first game against North Carolina Central with only two weeks of practice. Didn't have any spring training or anything and played that first game again last year with two weeks of practice and could have won that game. So uh, next, this coming fall is going to be a totally different Alcorn going back to where we were. Alcorn definitely gonna, should be with either first, second place in the West. Oh, man, the West, the West is going to be interesting. I, I mean, for me, looking at the West right now, I think it's a th I think it's a three-team race. I think Alcorn, Grambling, and Southern. And they all got their own questions about them because Grambling, you know, you, you yeah, know Jackson it's four State. Ways, cause you, it's four ways. You, can't over, you cannot ever overlook Texas Southern. Oh, that's – yeah, Andrew Body's a baller, man. I just – man, that defense, man, that, that defense – really scares me because i mean they lost a lot of talent from that defense of of what was already not a great 
overall defense. And I also wonder how do you replace Giles and some of the wide receivers you lost around Andrew Body too? And but it's it's, te- but it's Texas school, so that's true. Uh, even though even, even though you're getting some names you might not be familiar with, these are hometown <laughs> heroes. That's so true. you cannot overlook Texas Southern in any sport. I don't even care if it's girl softball. Don't <laughs> overlook them. Don't take it for granted because you just might be toting that air at the end of, when the sun go down. I, so that's what happened but, to but Southern that, last year. They walked they walked in there and thought there was going to be a, a guaranteed win, and they had other plans. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But I, I just the only thing I wish Texas Southern would change the, the is actually increase their marketing budget. They have too much of a battle fighting against Rice and Sam Houston in that Texas market. That's why you just can't really hear a peep out of them because it's too much in that Texas market. And they probably need to switch marketing firms, but they need to be more aggressive. Uh I live here in Houston. I, mm-hmm. I, I matter of fact I live in, in the Rice University district. So I know it takes a seven and that's been a well, you there? All right, I think we lost him. I think we lost him there, but he was man, Texas Southern is a sleeper. Let's see, uh Paul Quinzel's vegetables. <laughs> man, Lawrence, man, you, you got you got the wildest you got the wildest comments, man. He said they turned their football field into a garden, not happening. Mm, that, that's 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 brutal. That is brutal. He said, "Turned it into a garden." Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Villanova's in top 25 for basketball. Yeah, I think Villanova and Murray State are the FCS teams in there. South Carolina State will not go to the SWAC. The MIAC will uh, rebuild to and, and beat the SWAC on the field. I like it, man. Let's see. Um, HBC playoff system would not work again. Um, Liquid household income is less than eleven hundred dollars. Most most households are tapped out after homecoming into the season robberies. Mm. So no no playoffs for EA. He's he said what happened to the phone? Hey man, they want me. It was it want me. Um, you said you live you live in Rice Village. Oh, you got that money, <laughs> man. Los Jays out here counting counting other people's money. It's it's blue is true. Uh, listen, I would really like Texas Southern to be good, man. You know, looking at where they are and the recruiting access that they have, and I mean, according to everybody, listen, I haven't been to the campus. They got really good facilities and and money. I would, I want to see it. I, I, in my opinion, I would want, I would want to see, um, I want to see Texas Southern be good. They should be good. It makes no sense why they're not good. Texas College got to be uh, the worst HBCU name, and their mascot is the Steers. <laughs> Um, Albany St. Georgia enrollment is bigger than Savannah State enrollment. Um, yeah, and but also like 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 we talked about, Savannah State has tried it. They're not they're not coming to um they're not they're not going to come. Uh, they've already they've tried it. They failed, and I, I think right now they're they're probably going to hang tight where they are. Let's see, what's Texas State and HBCU? Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head, Leonard. I'm sure either Mr. Ford can call back in and let you know, or someone in the chat can let you know, but I'm not sure. Coppin State and Maryland Eastern Shore play club football. Maryland Eastern Shore last season, uh, 2016, Coppin State 2019. Um, how do you feel about a school like West Georgia jo- joining the SWAC? Um, I mean, listen, West Georgia's got some talent. I'll I'll be honest with you, but you know, in terms of in terms of keeping it like it, it really depends, KD. If we if if everyone wants to keep the swag strictly HBCUs, I know West Georgia has a really high enrollment, I, like they're like a very diverse campus. But I don't know how they would feel about it not being like an actual HBCU school uh, joining the swag. So I mean, I don't I feel like it would be an interesting ad, but I don't know what you know people people's thoughts about that would be. But I think it would be a good ad in terms or a good possible ad because i've been i've been around where it is it's in a really good location in georgia and they've they've turned out some really good athletes i mean i know auburn and alabama georgia have had a lot of transfers from west georgia so potentially albany state enrollment only increases because the state combined them with another school okay uh albany state enrollment is bigger than some swat schools yeah no i knew about dawson state is an hbcu but i was saying if they if if everyone's okay with adding a non HBCU school into the SWAC, then Valdosta State and West Georgia and some of the, and, you know, 
West Florida and some of these top D2 schools could be an option, even though it, I don't know if Leon is in the chat or not. He's he used to go to Valdosta State CH and he said that they're not um, they're not ready uh, to move up. But we'll see. They, they got it on the football field, though. Uh, North Dakota used to beat North Dakota State when they were D2. Give North Dakota another year or two. They may beat them in South Dakota State. Always close. Uh, to beating North Dakota State, man. North Dakota is going to be an interesting team this year. T. I know they had a lot of they had a lot of talent last year, and it just didn't really come to fruition. But those Dakota schools, man, are built different. I don't know, I don't know how they get up there and and, and get all that talent. The problem is, if you looked them up, they pretty much have the same name as the Texas Longhorns. I didn't want any misinformation on their academic excellence related to to SWAC schools. Yeah, let's see. I, I know I missed a few comments while on the on the call <laughs> Timota's gonna let you know man she she wants that she wants that playoff system um let's see the CAA has Villanova Elon Rhode Island and Maine and our headbusters now look at JMU to dominate the the CAA uh, Villanova is probably my pick this year T I'm gonna be honest uh let's see I think that I think that was all I caught up with he said he's, that's not liquid uh I said that's liquid, not median. I don't know. So for us, for like a playoff system, I mean, I mean, if you do a home and home EA, that might be a little bit better because people won't have to pay as much to travel. But I mean, I, I feel like Jackson, you know, Jackson State fans this year didn't really have a problem, you know, going to the swag. They had the all corn game the final week of the season, the Soul Bowl or whatever they renamed it um, in terms of the new classic. Then they had the swag championship. And then they had, um, then they had the celebration bowl, and they packed out all three of them. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know if it would be a huge problem, but I mean, I can see, I can see where you're coming from from that. But man, I'm gonna close down the call lines right now, man. I mean, appreciate y'all so much for tuning in, rocking with us on a Friday, and I'm probably gonna start doing a Friday live stream just to kind of. You know, catch up with all the news, um, all around. I guess all around the FCS and college football, man. So thank you all so much, man. I think we hit our record number of viewers in a live stream consecutively. So thank you all so much, man. Listen, check out our interviews from this week. We had some really awesome players come on the show, and next week we're hitting FAMU, Montana State. So stay tuned for the announcement of who is going to be coming on the show. I took y'all's poll into consideration. I'm gonna do some live stream interviews, some not. So we're gonna kind of go, you know, like 75, 25 or something like that um, in terms of interviewing on the channel moving forward, man. But thank you guys so much. Y'all have a great Friday night. Hit the like button on your way out. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe now. And I'll be back next week with some more interviews and live streams coming up. But thank you guys. Have a good Friday and I'm out. Mm -hmm.